My name is Kene Obuzuru. I, from his brief introduction, first of all, I work with agents of communication and development as the executive director. And um, I also own a, a business, a cleaning business. We are into industrial cleanings and later on, we also open a part of our business that, the way that we handle dry cleanings and we're going to still um, increase more and uh, expand. But probably in between my discussion and my talk, I can be able to still throw more light on it. So I'm going to talk on upscaling the art and science of business. And then, you know, our team is Ebambo, the residents. And I so much like the team, Ebambo. And um, first of all, I'll begin with the story of how I personally began to um, uh, hustle. Nana said Ebambo means hustle, to hustle. I know um, from 2015 to 16, I began as a volunteer at Agents of Commission and Development, A-Code. We, we are doing a work on school-based management committee. We are centered on education, health, and good governance and legislation. But before then, I already began my business part of myself. That's the cleaning part of what I do. I began, this is my 11th year doing this business. And so far, so good. I have learned the lessons and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm growing. So I'll just go into the business part of it because that's where I'm told to talk on. So first of all, um, Mr. Lepas already gave us a brief idea on what Ebambo means. And he said the concept of Ebambo is actually, um, it doesn't just mean hustling. It means you being smart, kind of trying to solve a problem and as, as well as get money. And that will take me to the business part of why I am sitting down here. So a few years ago, um, around 2016, things went up south, and then I needed to um, see what I can do to make a living. So I began to, first of all, I began to sell clothes. And I began, I, I went to Abba. My first day in Abba, I took the picture. And I still have it in my phone because I will tell the story one day. I left Enugu to Abba, only me, to go to um, King's Road, yeah, Abba, to go and get plane and pattern. That was when it was raining. And it wasn't, as when I began the business, it wasn't so easy for me, and, but... I did it for two years. I never had a shop. I sold all my clothes online. And I always go to Abba every two weeks. So that would give, get to the first point I want to raise about a bumbo. Before you can be able to bumbo successfully, first of all, you must love what you are doing. You must love what you do. That love you have for what you are doing is the driving force you have. So going to Abba, is not that easy for me. It wasn't that easy for me. Because during that time, 2016 to 17, Abba Road wasn't so good. So I would leave Enugu every Tuesday, every Tuesday to Abba. I would leave my house by five so that I, I can be in the park by six. And then I'm targeting being at the market by 8 a.m. So most of the times I'm at the market even before the owners of the shop are coming to the shop, so I'm actually being the first person to buy. And also, it was actually a target because every Monday, they have new clothes coming. So Tuesdays, we have inflow of people Monday and Tuesday. So Tuesday was very convenient for me. So, and I would come to Enugu, I would, by 8 o'clock, I mean, uh, about already, I'll try to shop and buy clothes before it is one. So I can rush back to the park. And then before it will load and will leave, at least before it will be three, four, because Abba Road is very, very risky. Sometimes when we experience robbers and all that, and we want to escape from it. So these 
are one of the challenges we, we actually faced that time. But then, what kept me moving? The love I had for my business. And what is that love? One, the love I have for good looking, people looking good. That dress, I, I love to see you, you with my clothes and you're looking good. I love to see you neat. And I, I actually kind of imagine my clothes on you and how good you are looking. So I loved what I was doing. I was selling my clothes as if, if you wear it, you look fine. So that's my first point of, you have to love what you're doing. Second is, you are the first advert of your product. So in business, you should know that you are the first advert of your product, whatever you are doing. People must have to see it in you first. So, and then, knowing, getting this knowledge, I began to, so most of the clothes people won't buy, because sometimes they won't buy most of your clothes, and it will last for some time. So I now sew it and I wear it. And then when I wear it, and they'll be like, ah, ah, can I? These are the clothes you rejected, though. Because most of the times you, you get this clothes to them and they will not like it. They will tell you, Mba. And then I began to wear it myself and I began to like it. So most of the times they now sew some of my own styles just to appear the way I. In fact, you need to see me wear these clothes. In fact, people that know me know that one of, one of the things I like doing is to making things I do attractive. And that's one thing you have to learn in business. You have to make the things you do look very attractive. If you don't do it, people will not like it. The mission is to make it attractive. If you don't do it, they will not like it. So coming to um, my cleaning part of what I'm doing, because once I finish cleaning, I take a pictures of before and after. And then the way I will say it, the way I will present it, makes it look beautiful. And then people will be like, Kene, na, no, you come and clean for me. Kene, men, and I have people that have told me, they say, this is December, you do this thing for me. Because of what? How I'm able to sell what I'm doing. And it looks so attractive to them. So, first of all, I said, you have to love what you are doing. Secondly, you, have, you are the first out of your product. And thirdly, make what you do attractive. So, I have made, I give an example of the clothes and then the cleaning part of um, the business. So the fourth one is you, okay, the new trend is now is content creating. And as a business person that wants to upscale in business, you have to invest much on content creating. And um, part of my own business, I've not been able to do so much because of one, in business, well, it's actually part of the points, but in business, you can't do it alone. You have to outsource so many other things. And one of the things you have to outsource, one, is content creating. Because most of the times when we clean, we can begin to clean now and we'll finish very late. I won't have now time to do the after pictures and videos of what I'm doing. So you see, I cannot be able to do all the whole things at a time. Because administrative work of the business is actually the main work doing that administrative part of everything. That's the main work. I'm not even doing the job. Because you have to coordinate the laborers, trying to instruct them. In fact, you actually the eye. And when bigger, if they start doing this one now, they will not finish on time. You say, I'm going to leave this one, do this one. You know, and it involves a lot of brainstorming. So I can't do everything at a time. So what do I do? You have to outsource it. I had a friend, um, IJ, doing the content creating for me, then posting on my Instagrams, and on my Facebook then. So you have to invest in content creating. If actually you really want to upscale in content creating, you know, the adverts, whatever you are. Now TikTok actually makes it look, look so easy for you. There are so many apps. You can talk of, um, what is this one again, that they now used to merge videos in shots and um, cap cuts and all that, which actually helps you to infuse your audios, your voicings, and match it up with your videos. You know, that's a very huge progress also. Then also, the last, another point is, what are the qualities you attach to your brand? Um, and it, this is actually one of the major parts, major thing, if actually you want to upscale in business. What are those things, that, those qualities that you infuse in your business? One, the integrity. 
do you have integrity? If people can't trust you in business, then it's not started. You can't go far. I can remember um, my clients would tell me, okay, and the reason why I call you is that even if I come back tomorrow and I find that this thing is wrong, or you could not do this work very well, you come back and do it. That's a huge trust, and that's a good sign in business. When people know that they can correct you and you can actually upset, uh, um, upset, um, accept it, and then you come back for damage control. And that's a big thing. So whenever they're coming for cleaning, they're, they're kind of rest assured that even if they're not around and they pay me in full, then when they come, when they come back and tell me, we can come back and come and do it. And then we live in a world where some people will tell you, Oga, you have to pay me again to come and do that job. And the person may not be happy with you, and then that's all that time. So, one, integrity. Then two, as evil people, we would say, Uchu, Itu ni Uchu, I don't know who knows the meaning of Uchu. Who can tell us the meaning of Uchu in Igbo? Nana Imanka. Do you know what is Uchu? Eh? She said, she said, to chase. Okay. Somehow, okay. Right, okay, that's it. Doggedness. Okay, yeah, so we all got it. So, it's in you You can talk about passionate, seriousness, you know. You have to doggedness. You know, and then, in it's new to, in what you are doing means that you are aiming to do it well. You are seeing that whatever you are doing, you are doing it perfectly. If you do a mistake, the next time you're doing that job, you are trying to make sure that you don't repeat that mistake again. So I, I, can, I can remember the, um, one time um, a, an, um, a magistrate seized my money because my workers were careless. The chemicals touched an iron in her kitchen and it changed the color. So the, the job was 50,000 naira job and she already paid me 25 as part payment. And she now sees the other part, 25, till today. So, and what did I do? I said, okay, no problem. I have learned. So next time, I began to use cellotapes and what approves. So once we come for a job, I tell them, oh yeah, go and make sure that you cellotape all the whole ions in this house. So I can also preserve my money and preserve the, the, my clients, what? Their own equipment and their own properties. And that's for me, it's neutral. I'm not careless. I want to see myself scale in business. So what? I have to tune out the doggedness, you know, the passion. That's, um, and, I, and I said, chasing it. Yes, I have to chase it very well to see that I don't do it again. So, and that's a part, a quality you have to attach in your business. Another one is, I so much like it, Eguchuku. As an Igbo people. And then we know what is Eguchuku. You know, and then Eguchuku doesn't just mean it's Ebu, your God, but that conscious spirit that tells you when you're doing this thing wrong and when you're doing it right. And that's Eguchuku. So, in so many ways, we've seen business fail because Antimanya, one cup of rice, Ojila has a cup, Manyagia. Tomorrow, will you go back there? It's not one at the very wicked. So sometimes in, in business, we will see um, a part. I, I tell my workers, I tell them, make sure you cover every place. Attempt all questions. Don't leave anyone. Even if it means that we have to like, come, like, get six boys to come and lift that property, we have to do it. We have to touch it so that probably in the next six months, that man can, would want to push that property, and they will see that, ah, in the clean of the and then on them, it's not how clean. They didn't even clean it. In fact, I have more bully have So, what do I do all the time? I make sure I cover up most of the places that would warrant them to question my integrity and my work. So, I tell them, if we were dropper, we have to shift it, unless I could be on a wall. 
You know, so we have to attempt all those things. I don't have to hide your broken glass. There was a time in Obatun, December work we went, and my boy wanted to step on one glass. I'm not going to have a glass. I had to step on it to actually clean a window, and the glass broke. Very expensive. So I told him, oh, God, you have to report yourself to the man when he comes back. <laughs> we did not go from that work. We had to stay till the man comes back. The man came back, and my boy told him, had to carry it. You know, to tell him, oh, God, this is what I did. And I was open. I was out to actually pay if he wants us to pay because we spoiled something. But many a times you will see people that would, you would confront them to do something for you. They will spoil something in your house and they will go scot free. They will go without even telling you. Probably after a few weeks, you realize that there may be something in your house. How would you feel? And then calling them, they'll be like, ah, oh, this is not me. Oh. It's not also, there were so many people in that your house doing jobs. You have electricians, you have painters. How would you think it is us that did it? And then they will begin to what? Lie. Just recently, a guy called me to come and pick his clothes in his house. And I picked his clothes. Unknown to me, one of his wife slipped off from my hands and then it fell down and I didn't even notice and I went. I left. My compound, there, in a very big compound. So it was early in the morning when I was trying to wash the clothes myself that I found out that nah, the aqua is, is not complete again. Ah, ah. I was so scared. I was so surprised. Ah, I was sure that this guy gave me this cloth, this white. And it was a very expensive white. You no, know, these big, big guys. Ah. I said, no, I have to carry my car that Saturday. That's early money. I drove down to his estate. I went to the estate and I started asking the gate men because I parked close to the gate. Because when I, when I left here last night, did you see any white cloth? They said, no. I had to even doubt them. I had to go around their own house to check if they actually <laughs> hang it anywhere. So I did not see it. I went to, I went inside the man, the guy's compound. I looked around, I did not see it. So I told myself, Omar, you have to call this guy. Instead of tomorrow bringing his clothes to him and he started looking for it and I'll be like, you never come the clothes. He started arguing, he did not give me the clothes. I know, I called him. You see, when you say, I'll him fine. You see, Abiko, I want to ask you some, say a question. You see, he said, did you give me this, your shirt yesterday? He replied to me, saying, don't tell me that my clothes has, you've lost my shirt too. I bought it two million. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. I told him, Biko, I, I think I misplaced it. I am so sorry. Did you see it? He told me that he went, when he was coming back from club in the morning, he saw his clothes downstairs in his compound, that he knew that that was his wife. Because I was leaving, he was, he, in fact, he left before me. So that was why I was scared. So he told me he picked it up. I told him, Biko, can you throw it down for me? So, and I was relieved. So, but what did that do? Oh, creates a very good image about me in his heart that he can be able to trust him. You know, it is that consciousness of Oegu Chuku. I don't have to lie about this. I don't have to make a kiss about this. You know, and then, why won't that guy call me tomorrow? In fact... He calls me almost every day. Oh, you too far for some. Can I come and collect it? And then I'm actually tired because I can't put every because my, my pick and my pickup and delivery this is one thousand. And then I'm coming to just go and pick just a shirt and a trouser. How come? So it shows how people can be able to accept you into their lives and to, to do business with you. So that's. Um, qualities you have to attack. There are so many more you have to attach in your business that can make big brands look for you, people look for you, because as you're sitting down here, you don't know who's going to be the big thing, next big thing that will happen. And then they'll contract you because of what, what you've been able to build within the years. The qualities you've been able to build and attach in your business within the years. Also, um, that ends the part of that. That's the fourth um, point, I think so. So, okay, that's the fifth one. Then, the sixth one, I already said it, I already made mention of it, is um, outsourcing so many roles out. In, um, and then I'll talk about the, my workers this time around and how I was able to outsource it, trying to manage their, um, um, the behaviors they exude during the act of doing their work. So um, as part of upscaling in your business, you have to be very, very... Um, 
particular about the people you employ. The kind of because they are the ones that also do the job and integrity and in fact the whole picture of whatever you are you are building. If your workers don't also have that picture, you can't scale. So if you are aiming at having this beautiful, you know, trustworthy brand, you have to build and train your workers. You have to employ workers that actually can share in the same vision with you. So and most of the times you can get stubborn workers. So I have, I have um, seen, I've gotten jobs that would require me to get more workers. And that's, where the, and that's where the problem comes from. I have never tried to get artisans because they will spoil your work for you. Because those people, you know, have Ocha Shibute. Ocha So they are just out to make sure that if for that day, God give me this day, my daily bread. Go and build a brand, they don't care. They will do the job anyhow and they will go. So most of the time, I, I will tell my workers, if you do rubbish, I will, I will sack you. Because it is easier for you to get another job once you live here than me getting another job. So as an employer, as a business person, you should know that you have to be very jealous about your brand. Why? Because if you employ me and I'm doing nonsense with your brand, if you fail, you have failed in business, but I can actually get another job elsewhere and start doing job. While you what? You don't get any job. You start to build another one. So what do you do? You have to be very, very particular about who you employ and how they carry your business. So and sometimes you see them. So if we, all these people that know, know knows this job very well, they are very stubborn. Sometimes hawagish. Sometimes they will behave somehow. You got, I have my friend there, Stephen. That was the job I had in Uboka. Um, is it Uboka? I'm a Gunze. I will go. And this boy. I planned this job with him. I told him this job is coming. I told him how much this job is worth. I told him, Ige Ejahafia, because we have to spend a week in that site. I told him, Ige Ejahafia, I told him, these are the things you will buy and this is to buy. A day to this job, this boy stopped picking my calls. I called him, because before I begin a job, I plan about that job. Because this um, Chinese um, warrior, Sun Tzu, said, um, a, a warrior that wants to win in the battle, must have to prepare beforehand, before the war. So it certainly made me, if I have a job, I already prepared and planned out how it would go. I have all my worker, workers, like I've already given you a job immediately. Even before, you know, then I said, okay, these are the things you will do. I've already mapped out the things we will do first. And that is the administrative part of the business. And it makes it, you see us do a job, I was supposed to last one week. In three days, we are done. Because I already planned out all these things. So I already planned that this guy is going to do the whole um, climbing. Because Eban be a glass house. So I, I planned that this guy is going to do the glass house and everything. This guy disappointed me. I called him and called him. In fact, I had to leave out Google the next day. We began that job, actually. I was not satisfied. Because I know that I already planned out this work and how it will be. So this boy missing will make me to do this job more days. I had to go and look for him. I started calling a friend that knows him in a suit. Nah. For me, I had to, to get his actual room. I left uh, Abu Ugo early morning so I can meet him still sleeping. I got there. This, this boy was playing music with the phone that he switched off. After the whole thing, who helped me out? My friend and his friend. Because they're engineers. I now call them because I cannot even climb. I will fall down. So, and they helped me. But today, that my worker still works for me. Even though I ghosted him for some, some weeks, months, like up to nine months. You know, I told him, Omo, even though you are important, you are not important. And he learned his lessons. He learned that, Omo, I felt I knew it all. But, Omo, I didn't. I, I don't. So, and that's a part of you own a business, you have to manage your workers. You don't have to always, you know, write them off. Some of them are very important. Some of them are very valuable. You may not do without them. But don't be scared to tell them the real truth. I tell them every day, if you do rubbish, it will go. I'll call another person because this is my business. If you fuck it up, 
Now, if you make me go out of business, you go out and do another business and you make money while I'm broke. So these are things you have to put in place when you actually want to go higher in business. So also, um, the, when he was talking, he talked, he talked about consistency and persistence. And I always tell people, these two words are omnipotent, if you know what omnipotent means. The power of persistency and the, the power of consistency. I will just bring it down to our normal lifestyle. So, Nana, assuming you have this local kiosk very close to your house, and every day when coming back, you'd want to buy Pepsi, a bottle of Pepsi, and you saw other people selling it. But because you know that you have that small woman selling it in your side, close to your house, you leave all of them and come and buy from her. You did it the first day she wasn't around. You have to drop your bag and go back <laughs> all the way up to go and get it. The next day, you said, okay, that woman is going to be around. You came down again and the woman is not around. You have to drop your bag and go up again angrily to go and get it. The third day, will you do it? <laughs> Can you guys say, that woman is not serious? <laughs> and that's the power of consistency. If that woman was consistent, you wouldn't think about going elsewhere. Because you know at every point in time she's going to be available. So that means you don't have any other option than her. So, but when you are on and off, nobody will trust you. Nobody would want to do any business with you. So those times I was selling plain and pattern, within the two weeks you will call me. In fact, there's no time you will call me and I'll tell you I don't have the clothes. Unless you don't like the ones I have. But I have clothes. So I see people call me, can I, I have, I want a pair. Or, or, unless you have, you want a, the same pattern for your children, I'll tell you, okay, don't worry. The next two weeks when I'm going, I'll get it for you. But if actually you want clothes, it's going to be around. And then if you call me, can I, you can I make cleaning in Sigi, ah, 24-7, add them active. And I always have my equipment with me in the house. I buy my chemicals because chemicals are one thing that you don't have to do without. You have, you, might, you can't do without it. So most of the times, if they call you on a Sunday, can you come to job today and then, you don't have chemical in your house. What will you do? Tell them, eh, kind of benign Tuesday because Monday is it at home. You can't even buy it on Monday. So you have to also make sure that the consistency in what you are doing, you actually like all the top notch that you don't, if anybody calls you at any point in time, you are still in that business. And that, that let me just draw our back, our minds back to what he said. He said that, um, you know, within a civil, um, civil society, Actually, you, you, you heard him, a Bayana government work, it was consistent. I was within, um, within um, last month, I, I got a call. I don't know I'm from, the, from what country. They were asking us about have we done any, any work on children with children concerning digitalization or something. You know, I had to tell them the truth. I told them, I won't go from Kaime, but we've done works on XBMC, Nkatumi, they had to include Nkatumi Bay and all that. They said, okay, no problem. And they ended the call. It was actually a woman. I'm a novel in Nigerian because her English wasn't so fluent and all that. So that's the part of consistency. But she was telling me, I'm actually looking at you guys' page. I got your number from your page, and I'm seeing your works. You know, your Facebook doesn't have most of your works. And as she said, I know how we do it in civil service and civil society that most of the times we don't post all we are doing. But she saw some of our works, and she went to our website, and she saw that we are doing something on, on child. So she wants to know this, this, and this, and this. So imagine if she had called, and there was nobody to pick the call. I got right time off. Maybe they don't have something for us now, because their font is not what we are doing. But anytime they have something relating to what we've done, they will call us. And that's consistent. So in your business, you have to be consistent. Even though the money is not coming, the CK. I have done it for 11 years, and in the minds of my friends, talk about cleaning, I see what can I? <laughs> because it is those that are closed that your mind will rush to. You want to know the person that, that does these things and brings it to your face every day. And that's the power of consistency in posting, 
consistent in telling people what you are doing, don't be ashamed. Just like I said, you are the first advert of your product. You have to always sell it. So it's in you. Like pig, it's in me. <laughs> so it should always be in you to always sell it. So and I'm actually I'm rounding up. And then lastly, there are just two. Lastly, the, the, the second to last one is um, change when the trend changes. When things change, be sure that you're going to change with it. Upgrade when things you need to upgrade. Okay? And you would agree with me that many businesses that did not enter into social media marketing and they fade out. During the COVID-19, we saw churches enter social media to actually begin their services. Sunday service, this one, join us. And we've seen people scale through online. Yeah, and what this is I'm saying, I don't have a shop. I don't have a shop. All the jobs I'm getting from cleaning is from online. So it's actually a very big space you can actually want to um, trend on. So once you see the trend is changing, be sure you want to change. I, I see my guy enter TikTok. I see Kenne, you have to reach 1,000. So we can always go live and make money. <laughs> so the day he called me and be like, Kenne, I'm going to turn $10 for going online. See, eh? $10. Say, don't worry. I must reach 1,000. Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying 1,000. <laughs> so <laughs> we're now TikToking. If you see me on TikTok, you can, you can ask your team. Be like, hey, what are you doing here? So, but you actually have to do it. You are seeing Nkemo doing something now. He's entering so many small, small skills, um, or Sophia. He doesn't want to actually go out of line, of, out of business. He knows that so, um, social media is now the, like, the real thing. You are seeing uh, Mrs. Johnson doing skits with comedians and all that. Because movies will not give you just the money you want now. People now cash out with just most, most kids online. Sabinu is somewhere on an art film, but he makes millions. So they want to join. You are seeing um, patients or Zork coming up again, trying to do something online. So these are the things you open up. Can you plan? Can you? Can you? Selling online now because of what? He embraced social media. See um, Kenneth Okonko. So these are examples of people that we felt would have gone into, into exile, they're still winning because what? They followed the trend. So in business, there are trends. In our business then, there was, we, we, I was, when I began, I, I began to use brush to remove stains, yeah, uh, particles from windows, agent and all those things. When I saw that it was actually wasting my time, I had to increase because if you don't use those machines, they will not pay you more much money. I began to use vacuums. Now we now have the ones that will now um, brush the tiles, shine it, and then, you know, it makes your work easier and less stressful. You don't explain anything. It makes it, it removes the stains you're going to use with your hand to remove, and then you don't remove it very well. So you have to invest in it. You have to move with trends. If I'm still in that part, they will pay me small, small money. So you have to move with trends. In your business, once it is moving, move. Don't remain there. Don't be as scared to move with your business. Move. Just carry on. You know, make sure that you remain in business. There are things you need to do. And once you are seeing that the world is evolving, you move. AI is coming. Sometimes there was this uh, organization I was their communication manager. I had to resign. Though they are telling me that, yes, that they are finding a new role for me because they, were, they weren't paying me so much. So, in all their medical um, um, contents, articles I was writing, I would have to consult my AI first. So, and I know AI is wrong sometimes. They'll just gather so many things just to tell you. So what do I do? Once I get the, the knowledge, the idea, I browse, I make research, and then I match it up with my own words. And I think, so whenever I bring it, they'll be like, ah, Kene, you are so good. Oh, I have to actually move with AI. That's the next big thing. So if you think AI is another good thing, be there. AI, that work you're doing, AI will come and be doing it for you. You go out of business. And lastly, pray. Because we are fighting so many things in this world. In business, if you have to be prayerful. In fact, what, whatever you are praying to, just be prayerful. Pray with it. Because whatever we are doing, we are also communicating with supernatural beings. 
So you have to be very good with them. You know, I tell people, I'm a God person. You know, I pray. Even though I'm not a, um, I, I don't pray so, but my life is a prayer. Because man, chogo, man, I chogo better. Man, man, mejogi and all that. So, but in business, you have to really be prayerful. And then, I will just end with, there are so many factors that will discourage you as an entrepreneur, as a business person. And these are the, these revolves around when you don't have any job. You start eating the small money you actually made. And then you sit in the house one month, one day, you'll be like, oh, more. I think I'll have to go and write a, an application and enter UBA and start working and abandon this my business. It has happened to me several. In fact, this last UBA, this thing, I applied. I, I wrote the first test. I was in center here. I wrote it now. Ask um, ED. All, all of them were on the table telling me the answer. We are hustling it. And then they called me the next one. I said, oh, I'm not going again. <laughs> Let me focus on this my business because I was like, ah. If I, if I actually, if I'm consistent and if I actually promote myself very well, though, if I get two jobs in a month, I've made how, how much hundreds of thousands, though. You know, so what do I need to do? I have to do. That's when the first point I made about loving your, your business comes in. That passion you have, you just the doggedness you said comes into place. The passion you said comes into place. The chasing you said comes into place. You have to keep on again chasing it. So these are the things and many things you would encounter. But when you remember the first point, when you love your business, when you remember the passion you have for that business, when you, have, when you remember the doggedity and that you have to always chase it, you would never, never go out of business. And with that, you've actually upscaled in it. And with that, nobody, nobody will tell you in that bumbo. Some people will tell me, can in a bumbo when I'm Because you are doing a whole lot. You are doing a whole lot. We are seeing you can hear them. Like, you are here, you are here. You are here, you are here. You are here, you are here. You are What are you doing? I forget bank, I forget bank. You need a, a, a prophet from Ghana. You don't need it because it's showing. So, Ibambo is a good thing. As a people, as a person, once in a bumbo, there's a joy you have when you're doing something for yourself. You know, when you write a proposal and it, it scales through, the joy you go have, say this thing scale through. Sometimes after that, when we, once you finish the job like this, I'll go and, people know me now. If you see me eat, you like to eat. <laughs> you see me enjoy food, I ask them, I ask them. You know, and then after each job, I'll be like, oh, I'm going go chop life. Let me go and eat. Can we hand now? And so that's the benefit. If actually you can, in a bumble, try as small as possible to look into yourself too. I did not just learn it today. Oh. I learned it from my guy here. Sometimes when we go to Imo, but do next day and see work, or we come back and be like, can I can just sweet lounge that time, through lounge that time. <laughs> we'll buy rice, we'll mix it up, and then we'll stay there eating it with Radla. <laughs> we'll spend hours sitting down there. <laughs> so, but, Osim, can I match that we've suffered this week? Let's match it up with, you know, a realization. So you have to really do that. So it makes you have a balanced um, kind of mentality. You know, you actually want to do things. So whenever these things come to you, once you have a very busy weekend, bambo funa, those your efforts, you match it up. So e bambo, in Igbo, in our land, as a person, it's good. And then please, in your business, always pray. And lastly, because love what you're doing. I love what I'm doing. In fact, people say, tell me, I love food. And then I promote food. Nigerian food, I promote it very well. I promote cleanliness. I promote, you know, the works I do. I promote, like, like now we're into dry cleaning. At least I know for sure that you'll not see me any day with any rumpled clothes. That's at bat, one. If I'm doing dry cleaning, you see me with a rumpled clothes. So each day I'm leaving my house, even down to my singlet, I will iron it. So in case water pour for my clothes and I have to pull out. <laughs> so in all in all, just make sure you love what you are doing. Thank you.